Welcome to Healthy Planet, the show for people who care about their health and the health of the planet on the Think Tech live streaming network series. I'm your host, Dr. Grace O'Neill. Joining me today in the studio or live in Zoom is Dr. Ruth Heydrich, PhD, Ironman triathlete, author, and speaker. Today, we're going to talk about the power of curiosity and synchronicity. So let's get into it. How did you become interested in triathlons? Well, let's back up and make sure everybody understands what the first triathlon was back in 1979. Uh, in, on, uh, well, here in Hawaii, we had the uh, uh, race around the island. We had the uh, Waikiki rough water swim and we had the Honolulu Marathon. And one day the three winners of each of those events uh, got together and argued about which one of us was the fittest, the swimmer, the runner, or the cyclist. And they said, we're going to see, we're going to have each one of you do all three events consecutively, <laughs> no stopping or anything. And the first one crossing this finish line here at Kapilani Park is the fittest. So that became the granddaddy of wow. triathlons. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it, it consisted of a 2.4 mile rough water swim, a 112 mile bike around the island, and then you ran the Honolulu Marathon, 26.2 miles. And uh, if you want to know who the winner was. <laughs> who was the winner? I want to know. <laughs> the cyclist was the winner. Oh, really? So, um, wow. Now, going back to why curiosity is important and how synchronicity is really a matter of luck. Uh, back in 1968, I was then 33 years old and just kind of starting to see a little bit of aging and uh but really felt i was healthy normal the standard american diet and then i was on a flight a long flight and i was looking for something to read on the flight so i went to the newsstand and i saw this book called aerobics and it was a new word back then because dr kenneth cooper had just coined it well i was curious and so i bought the book read it and it was about running or any exercise with the major muscle groups. So that got me started running in 68. So fast forward to 14 years of daily running, feeling fit and healthy. And one day I discovered it's lump in my breast. It was so large and it looked like it popped up overnight. I had had fibrocystic breast disease, lumpy breasts. And so I, I thought, oh, it, it's just another lump, but it was big. So anyway, I went in, I'd had my mammograms and they all came out negative. So I thought, eh, not, nothing to worry about, but I want to check and make sure. I got in and the doctor took a look at that and he said, why did you wait so long to come in? And I said, I, I just discovered it. And so he said, well, we're going to do a an excisional biopsy, which means uh, surgery to cut the whole thing out. So that's what they did. Uh, they, it was five centimeters, five centimeters, you know, that's big. And it, you know, and I told him, I want to watch the surgery because I know it's not cancer. I just want to see what it is. And he said, no, no, you don't want to watch. And I said, yes, I do. And he gave, caved in and I watched it. So he cut deeper and deeper and deeper. And he pulled it out, and put it on this little tray and cut into it. And he saw all these grains of sand. And he says, oh, oh, and, whoa. And I jumped up. What do you mean? Oh, oh, he said, uh, um, that's uh, no, we'll send it down to pathology and we'll see. So anyway, turns out that a tumor that size, he said that that almost automatically qualifies it as stage four cancer. That uh -huh. is really big. So anyway. Um, I couldn't believe it because here I was so healthy as a runner, but it turns out that was only half of the equation. The other half came about a week later. I had just had the excisional biopsy and no clear margins. So I was being scheduled for a mastectomy and they said, because you're 
at such a high risk for breast cancer and the other breast, uh, I suggest we do a double bilateral mastectomy. So I said, oh yes, I want to, yes, I don't want to die. Mm -hmm. And so that was scheduled. Well, I had taken leave from work. I was a logistics officer at Hickam Air Force Base and I was on medical leave. And I just happened to be thumbing through a newspaper and I came across this ad. It's yellowed with age, the print so tiny you can barely see it. But what it says, it is diet and cancer breast diet research and call Dr. McDougall. And it was a Kai Lua number. So I immediately, curiosity, immediately wanted to see what he was going to do. I knew it wasn't diet because I was already into whole wheat bread and cutting the, uh, the fat off the chicken and, and taking the skin off. And I thought, you know, that was good enough. Oh, and low fat dairy. In fact, it was so low fat, it was carnation powdered milk. So I said, okay, I'm gonna help him prove that it, it wasn't diet. So I got in to see him. He said, get your medical records. I wanna talk to you first. And so uh, I got to Kailua, handed him my medical records. He's looking through them and he says, you know, with the cholesterol this high, you are at as great a risk of dying of breast cancer as you are the, a heart attack. And I said, wait a minute, I'm running marathons. I had done a bunch of marathons at that point. Yeah. And he said, and this was just before Jim Fix um, wrote his famous book about running. And it was the beginning of the running boom starting. So uh, that was... Uh, I was scheduled for chemotherapy and radiation, but Dr. McDougall said, no, we're going to change your diet. What? He said, yes, here's the evidence. He pulls out a file drawer and he, these are the animal studies and the, these are the epidemiological studies. And he says, there's so much evidence that breast cancer is a diet related disease. Now this Dr. McNeil is back only oh, yeah, back in 1982. I That's know. So it's the forward thinking. Yeah. Well, because, I mean, you know, nobody still, is doing this. People still don't recognize that it's a diet related disease. They think breast cancer and then chemotherapy and then mm -hmm. radiation. Uh, yeah. So uh, right about that time, I still hadn't gone back to work. And I was just watching TV, which, which I never had time to do before, just looking around. And here's the ABC Wide World of Sports. And it's the, the, the third running of the Ironman Triathlon. And at that time, it was right here in Honolulu. And so I watched the, <laughs> the swim right down the road at Waikiki Beach, mm -hmm. and then the bicycle and then the Honolulu Marathon, and that was the very famous one where Julie Moss was the winning female. She was in her 20s then. And just before the finish line, she collapsed. And the crowd was saying, come on, get up, Julie, get up. And she crawled. And that's when Kathleen McCartney passed her. And, oh, my uh, gosh. And, yeah, <laughs> and I'm watching this and thinking, my gosh, wow. You know, with my new diet, what I found out, I was running faster, I was recovering faster, and I thought, all I have to do is add the swimming and dig out my old rusty bike from the garage, mm -hmm. and I'm going to do the Ironman, and I'm going to show people how powerful this diet is. And so the synchronicity is the luck in finding this book, the luck in seeing the notice here. And the, the other first book uh, about the change is Making the Change, Dr. Mm -hmm. John McDougall's very first book with all the recipes. <laughs> and so I was winning. In fact, uh, I've got a whole bunch of trophies. You can see, uh, in fact, of a, a bunch of them <laughs> are in the closet because there's no more room for them. And even got um, a gold medal in the senior Olympics. Mm -hmm. I had always thought about when I was in high school and a swimmer, I mm -hmm. thought I wanna 
be an Olympic swimmer. Esther Williams was, and you old timers will remember Esther Williams. She was a great swimmer and uh, the Olympics were famous even then. And I thought I'm gonna be like her, but then with uh, college and, and other things t distracting me, I just kind of mm -hmm. forgot about it until I heard about the Senior Olympics. Uh, when somebody, another running friend of mine, said, you know, you ought to enter the Senior Olympics. And I said, the what? Senior Olympics? He said, yeah, they have state levels and national levels. So I did the state level first, qualified for the national level, and got another gold medal. And so, wow. And that's when uh, Dr. McDougall said, you've got to write a book. And so that was the first book, Race for Life. And then uh, a couple of years later, at age 70, I was still doing triathlons. And my editor at Lantern Books, Martin Rowe, called me from New York City. He said, you know, we need you to write a book on senior fitness. And what I knew and he knew is that diet and exercise are so vitally important and that we can reverse so many of these diseases. So that's that's how I, I got started. Um, let so me tell, tell people about how, like, how did the breast cancer treatment go? You essentially, you had the mastectomy and then afterward, did you do the chemo or the radiation? Dr. McDougall said, do not do chemo radiation. It causes permanent damage to your immune system. Mm -hmm. And it is there's no proof that there's any cure that recurrence is is <clears throat> very <coughs> very likely if you don't change your diet, and yeah. that has turned out to be true. So, um, so I, you've never I, had a recurrence for how many years now? How old are you now, Ruth? You're eighty, <laughs> almost eighty-seven. Then yeah, when did you get diagnosed? Thirty-six. So it's been what fifty years, and you've never had 40. a recurrence just on your diet. And yeah. Exercise, right? So tell, tell people about what kind of stuff you eat every day, what kind of diet you have. It is fruits and vegetables, legumes and whole grains, uh, a few nuts, not to make them high fat, but some nuts and uh, mushrooms. Mm -hmm. uh, I read the research. I read Dr. Mc uh, Dr. Gregor's nutritionfacts.org. And he publishes all the latest research. And so I've added these mushrooms and, and nuts, walnuts in particular. So mm -hmm. I also have a lot of fruit. Uh, we're lucky here. You're, you're eating the nuts now, you because I remember you said it was low fat before, but are you right. limiting the nuts at all, like to a handful, or are you yes. eating them fully? In the morning, uh, because I have a handful of almonds, because research shows that that helps the bones. Mm -hmm. And in the evening, a handful of walnuts because that helps the brain. Yeah. In fact, I have blueberries every night as part of my dessert. Uh, blueberries are brain berries and the research is so clear uh, that it helps prevent dementia. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't used to drink coffee and then I started reading the research that uh, <laughs> it, is it the certain amount, you know, up to three to four cups a day is healthy and prevents dementia or helps, you know, to lower the risk of dementia. So that's, uh, and green tea, I have that as my beverage and mm -hmm. uh, was doing really, really well, just collecting medals. I did, uh, when I was 64, I was going to do, 64 races because I did like in one weekend I did three races one weekend and I got three first places wow yeah and it, the, yeah. like on the sports page by coincidence <laughs> um they were all listed together you know Ruth Heydrich mm -hmm. first place Ruth Heydrich next call. <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> the editor <laughs> called me and he said, I can't <laughs> believe what I'm reading. He said, how did you do it? So he uh, interviewed me and so a story appeared about that. And you know, with all these races, like the winning the Ironman in Japan and winning the Ironman in New Zealand, I always stress the diet mm -hmm. to the reporters. Yeah. But amazingly, you know, 
they don't want to talk about it. Um, and the same is true, like with climate change. Mm -hmm. You know, we know that eating animal products, animal husbandry is the number one driver for climate change. And yeah. yet the COP26, they, nobody mentions it. It's really, really sad. It, we, mm -hmm. it is so important that we change our diet. So everything was going really, really wonderful until I started about 10 years ago, I started having some strange symptoms. And I thought, it, you know, that's, that's not what happens as you age, even though everybody thinks it does. And the reason I knew about that was, um, are you familiar with the blue zones? Yes. The blue zones, and very few people are, unfortunately, because when I started going to doctors about why I was having joint pain, why I was having these autoimmune disease symptoms, why I was having chronic fatigue when I'd always had so much, you know, an Ironman triathlon, my first one was 14 and a half hours of yeah, constant racing from going that level of energy to mm -hmm. hardly getting out of bed and just feeling totally exhausted. And, and I knew with the blue zones uh, where they have the highest level of centenarians and none of these symptoms that I was having and that the other people uh, in eating the sad diet have, uh, my blood pressure was still good, my uh, cholesterol still low, and my, what's the third one, metabolic syndrome. I had none of that. Oh, wow. So I couldn't figure out what was going on until I picked up a newspaper and saw headline, breast implant illness, living nightmare. And I thought, that's silly. You know, I had reconstructive, reconstructive surgery and they said, uh, silicone you know these are the, the answer and you you can look normal again i said yes i'll have some more normalcy after this surgery because i went a year without anything and i was embarrassed when i would be running races at at be totally flat chested so i could hardly wait yeah. for the construction and i they told me you know nobody even mentioned any of the possible side effects like i joint pain and the autoimmune and the uh, mental fog and uh, oh gosh the osteoporosis hair falling out yeah all these symptoms and so i went to these doctors and they said it's your age you've got to accept it you know and a few even said well the osteoporosis is because you don't eat dairy yeah, well i is... knew that the countries that eat the most dairy have the highest osteoporosis and that milk is not or cheese is even worse is not the answer and so after reading that article about all these symptoms and i was having the same thing I went to the plastic surgeon who put them in and said, you've got to take these out. And he said, what, why? And I, told, I showed him this story about breast implant illness. And he said, oh, that's silly. Uh, we know saline that implants or uh, the textured implants are, are safe, silicone. Well, what they didn't know at the time, nobody knew at the time, the research is very recent. It's only been in the past a couple of months that the research done in the Netherlands of all places where they were further ahead in knowing that these were dangerous years ago, they were banned. Canada banned them years ago. And in fact, a, a, it's a researcher from the University of Alberta came to the US on his own dime to the FDA to testify Mm -hmm. You've got to get these breast implants off the market. They start their microgel bleeds of silicone and heavy metals from day one. And of course, because it's microgel, uh, you don't see any symptoms, but because it goes directly into the circulatory system, mm -hmm. guess where it goes? Every organ in the body, head to toe, uh, skin to liver to the brain it crosses the blood brain barrier which is supposed to keep all the bad stuff out but it doesn't it gets through and that's the mental fog that 
I have. And so it, it's just been a, a really a living nightmare. I just uh, wanted yeah, to. I mean, that's, that's terrible because all these people like you, and there's so many other women who had breast cancer and they were given this alternative and they have no idea that they could be having any symptoms from this is very, it really isn't known. I actually didn't know about this until you told me about your symptoms. And I never knew there was yeah. any such thing. So most medical doctors don't know about this. No. And uh, when I tell them this, they said, silicone safe. He said, look at the uh, kidney dialysis patients. They use silicone. And you know, there's a big difference between the silicone tubing to do the dialysis and the implant inside the body where the body's immune system immediately recognizes this foreign body and starts attacking it immediately. And yeah. so you get chronic inflammation starting from day one, just because of the foreign object in the body. Yeah. There was uh, PubMed, uh, that you, you're familiar with PubMed and it, yeah. It, yeah. And I just printed out this article right here and mm -hmm. what it says, silicone breast implants, historical medical error. And so I wanna take this to every one of the 14, oh now 15 specialists that I went to see about my osteoporosis. This, that's the reason yeah. about my joint pain, uh, my, uh, autoimmune disease, it's my uh, immune system attacking the heavy metals and the silicone. These are also heavy bodies, uh, foreign bodies in the body and attacking it and the, the damage that does when it's in the bones, when it's in the uh, organs is collateral damage because yeah. that's how the uh, everything, skin gets damaged, uh, your hair falling. When I ha have hair falling out, I look at the follicle and it is, they've gotten smaller and smaller and they're misshapen and the hair's yeah. gotten thinner and thinner. You can't even see it. The only way I know some of these hairs have fallen out is because I feel it. You, mm -hmm. can't, you can't see it, but yeah. I, I feel it. I know it's there. That's how uh, the hair is, I've lost 90% of it. I, I think it doesn't look like it, but because I had so much hair before, you know, mm -hmm. so anyway. Tell, tell everyone about your website, um, just, you know, cause we're gonna have to, you know, close it up soon, but tell everybody about your website and the book you wrote about this illness. So people can be educated about what they can do if they are suffering these symptoms and maybe even read the book before they get a, breast implant or if they're thinking about having a breast yeah. implant. Yeah, I'd mentioned A Race for Life, my first book, and then I also did a recipe book, Chef, Cheap, Healthy, Easy, Fast. And mm -hmm. then uh, when I hit uh, almost 50 years of running, again, you know, back in 68 when I started, my editor asked me to write a book on lifelong running because he started running as a result of of reading and editing my books and thought, oh, I'm going to try it. So yeah. he asked me to write that book. And then uh, I started thinking about, you know, all these women need to know this and they have no idea and their doctors aren't going to help them. So no. I decided to write this book on how healthy I was doing Ironman triathlons and winning races and and to gradually get to the point where I could hardly get out of bed and had all these symptoms, yeah. women need to know this. So that's uh, why I started uh, my book. And uh, it is on my website, Breast Implant Illness, A Living Nightmare. So you can see, uh, maybe uh, Michael can show the, the uh, Facebook, not Facebook, my uh, website, ruthheidrick.com. Mm -hmm. with the books uh, yeah the books are on the side there everyone yeah yeah, yeah. and if people go to my website which is ruthheidrick.com there's a button they can push and it is ask dr ruth and that's where <laughs> i get questions uh mostly about diet and breast cancer they get diagnosed with breast cancer and they google it 
And my name apparently is coming up because I get questions. Right now, I'm dealing with a woman in Tasmania, one in, at, you know, at the bottom of Australia, and one in Beirut, Lebanon, and one, in, several in Canada, and a couple that are somewhere wow. in the U.S. I don't know, and back and forth emails, and I just gradually mm -hmm. help them, support them, making that's so wonderful of you. Yeah, so that's a, turned out to be, a, yeah. I spend more time on my website than I did as the logistics officer in the Air Force. <laughs> when I went home, you know, I was free, except yeah. we had exercises at 2 a.m., but that was kind of rare. Uh, I just want, I've reminded me of, I team spirit was an Air Force exercise mm -hmm. done with the Koreans, South Koreans, and I played the chief of maintenance at Osan Air Base in Korea. And man, that was a highlight. And I was a runner then. And so Koreans would see me running and they want to run with me. You know, I want to be run, run. You know, I ran the Great Wall of China. So all of these exploits uh, have just been taken away from me because of these breast implants. So I am mm -hmm. hoping that my kidneys and my liver my lungs and skin, my natural, quote, detoxing, are gradually going to get rid of the heavy metals. They have found out there's no way to get the silicone out. Uh, mm -hmm. It's in the brain. The only way to get the silicone out, they say, is to take out the whole organ, which, of course, okay. so I'm going to live with this kind of a, a disability, but I, I'm going to manage. I'm doing well. Well, you're, you're amazing, Ruth. Um, sorry, we're out of time, but we have to, so we have to wrap it up now. But um, I'm Dr. Grace O'Neill. This is Healthy Planet on Think Tech live streaming network series. We've been talking with Dr. Ruth Heydrich about the power of synchronicity and curiosity. Thank yeah. you all for being here. Thanks to Eric, um, Michael, our broadcast engineer, and the rest of the crew at Think Tech for hosting our show. And thanks to you, our listeners, for listening. I'll see you on February 17th for more of Healthy Planet on Think Tech, the show for people who care about their health and the health of the planet. Our next show features guests, Kathy Louise Boda, yoga teacher and co-owner of Yoga Studio Purple Yoga. We will be talking about pelvic floor muscles and yoga for back pain. If you have ideas for the show, please contact me at healthyplanetthinktech at gmail.com. Check out my website at graceinhawaii.com for more information on my projects, including future show guests. I'm Dr. Grace O'Neill. Aloha, everyone. <laughs>